Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote and I am your podcast for the show today. And today we have Rosie Ginde, Managing Director of Miss Macaroon. I am so excited to talk to Rosie, share a little bit about her journey to business ownership, best practices, and some challenges, challenges she's maybe faced along the way to really give you that inside scoop to what it's like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop episodes like this. Well, welcome, Rosie. It is so nice to talk to you today. Thanks so much. Yeah, really pleased to be speaking with you. Wonderful. Well, let's dive in. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. So I'm Rosie Ginday. I'm the CEO and founder of Miss Macaroon, which is a social enterprise based in the United Kingdom. So we make and sell premium gluten-free French macaroons, and then we reinvest 100% of the profits in supporting young people with multiple and complex needs to build their skills and confidence and help them to get into work. So we work with 18 to 35-year-olds who might have had mental health issues. They might have been on the... Um, been homeless or uh, been in touch with the criminal justice system. They might have learning dif differences or be on the autistic spectrum. They might be lone parents or um, from a global majority background. Uh, so we um, put them on our Macaroons Make a Difference training course or other programs that we run and we build their skills and confidence and help them to move into work. Uh, that is incredible. I'm so excited to talk about, like, dive in deeper to what you're working on within your business. And so what are some of the like some of the roles that you're providing? Like, tell me about your team. How many team members do you have? And what are some of the roles that they're serving? Yeah, so we are a manufacturing business, but we're also a retail business and a training organization. So uh, we make our macaroons on site here in Birmingham, in the West Midlands in England. And uh, then we send them out nationwide um, to restaurants, to corporate organizations uh, and to retailers as well. So we're in Selfridges, um, which many people in the UK will know, but it's a, it's a big um premium retailer and then we supply lots and lots of corporates across the uk with branded products um, and then we also have our own retail store which is just by the airport in birmingham and uh, then we have a couple of um, training spaces as well where we run our programs to support young people uh, so we're still a very small team there's 12 of us um, and we all kind of sit across all those different areas of the business and then in terms of the training programs we run we take on between six and eight young people per cohort and we have between kind of four and six cohorts per year um, depending on uh, what else we've got going on so we support quite a few young people to to really move into the different areas that they would like to go into. Oh, that's incredible. And how many people would you say per year uh, go through your program? So it really depends on um, the kind of programs that we're running. So um, at the moment, we are running our, our flagship program. And then we're also supporting a corporate partner. Uh, and we've co-created a bespoke program that's been based on the Macaroons that make, make a Difference training course, uh, but deliver social impact for them. It's called the Fairy Futures program. And it's run in conjunction with your co-op, which is um, the UK's uh, second largest largest member owned cooperative and the young people kind of um, roll through the warehouse, the mini bakery, the grocery store and their coffee shop that they have on site. Um, but previously we've also run um, different kinds of programs, uh, kind of focusing on setting up your own business or developing your own product or um, just building lots of different kind of cooking skills and, and food awareness. So to date, um, since we set up, we have worked with 230 uh, or so young people um, to help build their skills and confidence and help them to move into work. Wow, that's incredible. I absolutely love this. And I, I love that, you know, you're just bringing something to the like the social aspect of it too and just helping people i think that's really cool so i'm i kind of want to talk about your why you know what inspired you like what's a little bit about your story did you start out as have you always been a business owner or is that something you 
found yourself into and how did you come across macaroons and the work you're doing today? Yeah, so the idea started um, when I was much younger. So one of my close family members was in care when he was a young kid um, and it had a huge impact on him and his life chances. Had a bit of a tough childhood myself. So I wanted to provide opportunities for young people who've been in similar situations to really be able to support them in different ways and help them to kind of move into positive outcomes. Um, I kind of went to university and did a fine art degree and realized while I was there that actually I wanted to work in food that was a big passion love the way that it brings people together and it doesn't matter which background you're from everybody has at least one really strong food memory and it's amazing how you know lots and lots of different communities just gather around food um so i uh, after i finished my degree i went um to taiwan and i taught english as a foreign language uh and while i was there i ended up opening my first business which was a vegan and vegetarian restaurant and art space with a canadian friend called timbuktu and um just had an amazing time there and thought this is it this is is exactly what i want to do so came back to the uk trained to be a chef uh, and then went out into industry um, and built my skills. I went to go work at a Michelin star restaurant and then uh, uh, a big um, hotel. And while I was there, I got to uh, redesign their afternoon tea menu. And I used it as a, an opportunity to do some new product development and think about what it, what kind of product would work for me to be able to run um, this social enterprise. Mm. I love your journey too. I'm such a, I'm an art and foodie myself. And I think it's just incredible how you've like brought these worlds together and merged them and weave them into something really spectacular. And, you know, kind of looking at what you're building now and how you want to grow into the future. What are some of your ideas and plans for say the next three to five years? So we've got really big plans. Um, we are planning on um, building our All Rise partnership. So that's the work that we do supporting larger organisations to co-create programmes that work within whatever industry that they're in. So we um, go in and work alongside a really fast array of different stakeholders and then get them to um, think about how they can shift their particular workplace to make it more inclusive and then uh, build in a training program um, train up some of their team members and things like safeguarding awareness trauma-informed practice mental health and disability awareness and then we co-design a program that supports young people to not just enter their industry but just to as we do here um, get them to kind of figure out what their aspirations are, build those transferable skills, and then give them those opportunities to move into those different sectors. Mm, incredible. And like, what are some of the maybe some of the challenges you face? Because it sounds like there's like a lot of moving parts within your business and a lot of, you know, things to consider. So what are some of the challenges you're, you're facing with that? So I guess the challenges are are pretty similar to any organization. I don't think they're necessarily um, specific to being a social enterprise or the size that we are. So, you know, people is is one of the, the biggest challenges that we have and will, I think, always have because we're an incredibly philanthropic business, but we're also a very um, socially minded uh, kind of um, organization as well. So we're, you know, on very different spectrums. So if people kind of come from the charity sector, then it feel, can feel a little bit too business-like. And if people come from business, it can feel a bit too kind of wishy-washy. So, um, you know, getting the right people who are, you know, not only just really connected with the values of the organization and have similar values, but really put young people first and, and um, are motivated. Um, we've got a positive growth mindset as um, a key kind of tenet of our, our culture. So really motivated um, about always kind of improving and um, helping us to grow. So, you know, the great thing about it is that we're a really small organization. So pretty much every um, everybody who works for us has some kind of interaction with a trainee at some point through their, their um, program. So they, they have that real direct connection of how their job whether it's you know serving macaroons to a customer or whether it's actually making macaroons or, or delivering some training it actually is really changing lives so um yeah it's easy for people to be and feel connected to that mission 
but again, it's really challenging. You know, we're a small organization, we grow um, and we change a lot. It's That's the kind of constant state of flux, really. So having um, people who are connected with um, our values and our mission, but also able to kind of grow with us um, it is always a bit of a challenge. And we've got an amazing team, um, which is which is really good, but it's definitely something we've struggled with before. And I know, um, you know, the majority of businesses out there at the moment, um, there's, a, there's a skill shortage. So that that's part of the reason that we've got the program as well. Mm. And what would you say, like, say you're bringing on a team member or somebody into your organization, what are some of the the things you have to face within like onboarding or finding the right, the, the right fit for your company? Yeah, so it definitely starts at um, advertising and recruitment stage. So really putting the mission um, in front of uh, people who will be applying and just being really open and honest and just um, you know, it saves everybody so much time in the long long run that actually it's quite a tough job. Um, and, you know, ev even if you've got kind of a pastry chef job, a junior baker job or a senior baker job, you still have to think of this side of working with young people. So it, it you know, it, being really transparent about the kind of skills that you'll need to use. And then um, designing the interview um process so that people get to have a real experience of um of what it's like to work here so you know you might come from a pastry background or a teaching background and think right i know this job but actually our version of that job is quite different so it's really important to give people you know uh, an on shift work trial um where they can be around either um trainees or more likely graduates of the program who simulate being a trainee so that um, they get a feel for what it's like and um, our team members, those graduates of the program get to feed into that recruitment decision as well. It really helps for people to kind of feel part of the team um, that they get to recruit new team members. But I think that's really important, actually, you know, being open and honest that the interview process is really two way. Um, it's for them to figure out if we're the right kind of organization for um, for them uh, or and, and vice versa. So, you know, giving them plenty of opportunity to have a, a really good feel of the pace that we work uh, and setting the kind of intray exercises for that that interview session mm -hmm. to be really lifelike um, and you know matching the pace that we work at so people can you know self-select out if it's not for them um, but also for people who are really excited by that then it, it just gets them you know really keyed into to, um, joining the team. Yes, it, it sounds like you have like such a great system that you created for hiring and being transparent and, and bringing people in. So I think that's a really incredible and such a great nugget of wisdom for people in the hiring process across the board. So thank you for sharing about that. You know, looking at the business model, are you currently set up as a like a profit or not like a not for profit, not for profit business? So it's a not-for-profit business. Well, we say it's for more than profit because um, we, we invest 100% of our profits in um, supporting young people with complex needs to build their skills and confidence and, and change their lives. But actually, we can't do any of that unless we make a profit. So we're really, really profit-driven. It's just that, you know, it doesn't buy me a yacht. It, <laughs> it um, puts young people through the program. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, that's incredible. So how has that been different than, say, creating like a kind of a, a standard system of business, like having this element of the, you know, the not for profit, but for more than profit, um, that kind of element of it? Yeah, it's um, it's been really interesting because essentially it's, you know, uh, at the point where we were just manufacturing, we didn't have our retail arm. Um, it was still running two businesses. It was the manufacturing and the training and they need very different skill sets and different systems and different setups physically as well. So, um, you know, you've got all of the usual um, time pressures and skills pressures and resource pressures that any small business or solo entrepreneur um, would have, but then you're split over these two areas. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, 
been the ongoing challenge but um you know it's it's really been about kind of getting the right people on board whether that's pro bono board members or um, special advisors or or fantastic team members um to be able to kind of work through those systems and and have both running at full speed um and now three with the with the retail um business as well Definitely. And, you know, talking about your team and the development of your team, how would you describe your leadership style? Um, so I think over the past like five years or so, I have changed my leadership style. So it used to be very much um, lead from the front um, when appropriate and from the back when appropriate. But actually, I realized that every single person needs a very different leadership style. So it's not really about what my style is is it's about what that person needs um and sometimes that's coaching sometimes that's just you know directing sometimes that's role modeling and sometimes yeah that that's that's um supporting so it 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 flexes with the particular person definitely i really like that model that's that is another golden nugget to take away is like you know coming to the table with you know, what are their needs as, as being a leader? I think that's incredible, incredible leadership skills. I want to kind of dive into your marketing because it sounds like you're building something really beautiful there. And how are you getting the word out about your business? So um, we try and uh, make the most of as many media opportunities as possible. So we've been, um, featured in uh, local, regional, national news, um, both in print, um, on TV, on the radio. So, you know, just getting our name out there as much as possible in that respect. We're on social media, um, whether that's kind of direct to consumer or, or B2B on LinkedIn. Uh, and we've got our website, missmacaroon.co.uk. Um, we, you know, blog on there. Um, but really it's about, um, those relationships that we have with large corporates, you know, a huge um, proportion of our business, whether, um, it's macaroons or, or sponsoring, uh, programs or, or, um, supporting with mentoring post program or working in this partnership way, um, you know, corporates are, are some of our key partners there. So that's really about building relationships, going out, speaking at conferences, um, running our own events as well, uh, and just being really visible um, and bringing people along the journey. Um, uh, again, you know, we've got lots of different ways that we do that. And um, some of them are quite formal, um, like our special advisors board. Um, but then others are, are much more informal. Um, so yeah, we, we've got a fantastic team of um, supporters who do a huge amount of work for us. We've just had our website redesigned um, and turned into a Shopify site, uh, which was all done pro bono as well from uh, an amazing organization called Vis Visual Soft. Um, so just to be able to have that kind of support from, from organizations is incredible and really helps us to get the message out there more. Um, we also, um, you know, lean on um, and just keep the relationships alive really with some of our um, larger corporate sponsors. So where we have been on say entrepreneur development programs or, or, or things like that, then keeping in touch um, with those organizations. Also some of our massive suppliers, just kind of getting in touch with them, with their PR teams, sharing their story. Also, if um, a large, uh, you know, multinational company um, places an order for macaroons, then we'll always follow up with a, um, you know, a personal story of actually this many macaroons has paid for this much training and it's actually for this young person. This is where they um, started, they've been on the program and this is now where they've en ended up. So just being able to kind of tell that story is really powerful. And because of that, then we've had some fantastic opportunities to get the brand out there. So um, we had an incredible ad campaign uh, on national TV with NetWest Bank, and we've got another one um, coming up with our um, uh, cloud accounting package as well. Uh, and we've done stuff with our um, payments provider as well. So just being able to have that um, incredible story with, you know, case studies of young people who are happy to share their story uh, is really powerful. 
the power of storytelling is it's so cool and i just think that's such a fun element and a great add, value add to your company. This has been such an incredible conversation. I've had a blast talking to you. And now I want to dive into our rapid fire questions, which is uh, where you answer top of mind to, well, I'll be asking four questions. So are you ready for some rapid fire? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question number one is, what is the key to success for you? For me, it's definitely staying in touch with uh, my why, because as an entrepreneur, um, you know, you're pulled in so many different directions. Uh, you'll often say yes to things that you shouldn't really be saying and therefore you overwork. Um, but to get yourself through it, you have to just be so connected with what, you know, your purpose and what's driving you. Definitely. And what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Uh, this is a hard learned piece of advice, which is protect your time. So even though I just said, <laughs> I say yes to things I shouldn't actually, um, trying, uh, I am definitely trying to be, um, more intentional with my time because I've, you know, done the usual that many, many, um, of your listeners uh, and watchers will have done, which is work the 60, 70, 80 hour, hour weeks, um, but now I try and balance that. So, you know, sometimes that is unavoidable. Um, but for a week or two afterwards, I will make sure that I have a 40 hour week um, just to try and avoid burnout because I've definitely been very close. Oh, that is definitely something that business owners struggle with, myself included. Uh, number three is what is a book or any piece of content? Could be a show, a podcast, anything that you've taken in most recently? So, um, I've got a few books on the go at the moment. Um, one book is The Activist CEO, um, that is uh, written by Leila Dellis. Uh, and she is just a fantastic woman working in um, the EDI space, uh, bringing um, corporates along the journey to move into a more equitable space for for people um and actually i'm in the process of writing my own book so that's the one that i'm reading over and over and over <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> congrats that's incredible do you have like a time slot of when it's gonna launch i don't i don't at the moment i'm still in the thick of writing but yeah it's the ceo's social impact playbook and it's a how-to guide on um how to co-create programs that can change the world wow i can't wait definitely keep me posted i'd love to share about it that's incredible uh and our final question is if you could wave a magic wand and change one aspect of your business overnight what would it be so it would really be um it's, it's partly about my business but it's also actually just about the social enterprise sector so really bringing um the term social impact social enterprise and social enterprise products into the consciousness of um, the mainstream general public because actually so many people really want to put their money where their purpose is and um, change the world in that way but actually there's no real one movement that is pushing some you know there's so many incredible luxury and um, beautiful like really really high quality social enterprise products um, out there in front of customers in in that kind of cohesive way on a on a you know a really national basis so for me, if I had that magic wand, it would be a fairy godmother to be able to create a, a national ad campaign uh, and bring all of these incredible social enterprise brands together to um, to, to build sales and, and really importantly, to help that social impact for all those organizations, whether they're supporting people or planet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, th this was incredible, Rosie. Thank you for sharing this information. Let's help you get more known out there with your business. How can people find you? So they can uh, join us on our website, which is www.missmacaroon.co.uk. Um, find us on LinkedIn. Um, and we are I am Miss Macaroon on uh, Instagram, X and TikTok. And then we're on Facebook as well as Miss Macaroon CIC. Wonderful. Well, I'm super excited to connect with you. And for our final question for today, Rosie, what is most inspiring to you today? 
most inspiring to me is definitely the young people who walk through the door. I mean, you know, just today we've had six young people who um, are just incredible. You know, they just need an opportunity, uh, have a few different barriers, but just beautiful energy, you know, great ambitions. We've got three different entrepreneurs in there wanting to to set up their own businesses and and it's just that is incredibly inspiring for me that actually within 10 weeks um they'll have been through the program they'll have you know even more confidence hopefully a lot of them will be in work and those three will have helped to set up their businesses too wow well this is incredible this has been such a great conversation and to all the listeners be sure to listen to this a couple times through. Uh, Rosie had some great nuggets for us today. And Rosie, thank you for the impact you're making through the lives of others, through your business. This has been a very inspiring conversation. Thanks so much.